Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. Uh, so in today's lesson, I want to talk about price and how to use price to determine momentum. Um, I talk a lot about MACD and ADX, and I do believe they're incredibly important and very uh, helpful in terms of confirming uh, the price action, but we always want to start with price. And what I want to show is how you can use swings and Fibonacci to really help determine the momentum of a trend. All right. And so uh, let's go ahead and look at this agenda real quickly. Uh, so we want to look at the momentum using the price action. And I'm going to show you using a zigzag how the, we can measure the swings and uh, also using the Fibonacci grid to also determine um, whether we're maintaining that momentum. Uh, and then I also just wanna show how the indicators lag at turning points and how you wanna be aware of that so that you can lean on price when you need to. Then we'll go through the uh, symbol requests that came through. Let's go ahead and get going on this lesson. So I've got the chart of TradeWeb up, TW. And uh, what I wanna discuss is, and I've overlaid the zigzag on here, because what I want to show is how you can use the price swings themselves to give you a really good feel for whether there's strong momentum in place or not. You can also get a feel for whether the momentum is starting to slow or not without looking at any indicators. All right. And so let me just go through this quickly. So we get this move from this peak and we drop down one leg to the downside, one interrupted leg to the downside. Now, in terms of measuring how strong that move is, I mean, to me, it's a pretty decent sized move. Obviously, it, it was from over 100 to down under 80 um, in one single leg. All right. Now, what's more important to me is looking at it relative to prior swings. This swing to the upside, which is, again, which is a pretty good size swing. We can see the confirmation on a momentum basis to the upside. This was a pretty good size momentum swing to the upside. And we erased the entire thing. We actually undercut that. You see that? So I can see that the momentum is switching. That was a pretty strong move. Now, not only the trend is switching. I know if we come up and we take out a prior low that the trend is starting to show a sign of a potential reversal. Obviously, we need this and this to confirm that. But we, the fact that we came down and took out that leg, but look, think about it this way. If we make a move to the upside and we go like this, the trend is turning, but this is not strong momentum. Do you see what I mean? So if we get one uninterrupted leg to the downside, that's a pretty strong momentum leg. And it erased this from the upside. So this is a pretty big momentum reversal to me when I look at this. I, I can see that in the moment we retrace more than 50%, actually more than we were chased more than 62% from this peak up and we come down through the 62%, I know that this has lost a lot of momentum. Use the momentum grid on the zigzag and I think this will really help you determine how uh, the momentum is going without even looking at this. Now, here's the reason why I think this can be important. We always want to look at price first and then use the MACD and the ADX to confirm. Remember, MACD is based on the closing price because it's using moving averages based on the close. And the ADX is using the range, the high-low range. It doesn't really care about the close. I've done some videos on this. Uh, I spent a lot of time talking about ADX and MACD and how uh, they're calculated and everything. So you can go back through some old lessons. But the point I want to make here is that I can see the price move is really strong, even though the ADX isn't really showing that strong strong of a reading. You see how this didn't make a higher peak than the last green peak and we had a lot of momentum to the upside. It takes time for the ADX to adjust. There is some uh, lag to the ADX at times. So we need to be able to recognize when there's a switch taking place that's maybe not being registered on an ADX basis. Now in this case the MACD did confirm but there will be times where price will give a signal and neither of these will really confirm yet because but you have to know that price is telling you what's important. All right, now if we look at this leg and we do the re retracement, we retraced about 62%. Now what I would tell you is anything between 38% and 62% in a rally, you should expect continuation to the downside. All right, if, if, if we come somewhere in that FIB grid between 38 and 62, uh, and a lot of times it'll hit 50% right on the nose and then it'll turn back down. In this case, it got up to 62% and it turned right back down. Now, um, we can keep doing this, 
right? And we can see that this was another strong leg. And then we retraced, I think it was around 50% this time. And uh, we're getting confirmation this time on both MACD and ADX. You see how we got a lot of strength in the ADX? That will happen quite often. In other words, the second leg, the confirming leg. Remember, this is more like presumptive evidence. When you break the trend line, you form the two, uh, you form the two and then you turn down, you get this break. This is more confirming evidence here that there's a shift taking place, all right? When, uh, as opposed to the alert, we we're looking for the more confirming leg, and that is typically where ADX will also confirm that we have a trend to the downside. All right, now again, we get another retracement, and it's um, it's around as I mentioned. I think it's around the fifty percent move, and then we get a move to the downside, and it's a decent size move, um, but it doesn't. It, so look at the distance between this leg to here and this one to here. You see how it has lost a little bit? It's not quite as big as this leg, it's not quite as long. Um, so we wanna kind of recognize that. Now, in this case, the ADX, again, doesn't really see that, MACD does. MACD is a little bit more sensitive, and again, it makes a, about a double bottom, even though this is making a lower low. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. You see this move to the upside and how it erased this move back up? We we see it in MACD across in the zero line and all, but look at how the ADX lags. All right, now the second leg to the upside after retracement of about 50%, um, we get ADX confirmation and we continue to get ADX confirmation. And then look how this leg starts to shrink. See how this last leg is shrinking? This ADX isn't really confirming. So I know I'm referencing these uh, while I'm going through, but I want to show you how you can see how this leg barely makes it above this high. You see how this leg made a pretty dramatic move above this high, and the size of the leg is about the same as the size of this leg, and this leg is about the same as that. This one's about the same as that. You see how these are very similar? Now, this one's a little bit longer, but a lot of these are about the same length, you know, plus or minus a few points. So we kind of want to recognize that. Then we get a kind of a sharp pullback. We make a new high, and it barely makes it to a new high and starts to reverse. And I can see that we're losing some momentum here, right around the 100 mark, right? I mean, so you can see that without looking at indicators. And what I want you to be able to do is look at that and see that's taking place before you look at the indicators. We need to be able to see it in price, use the FIB grid. If we retrace more, in fact, this might have actually come down a little bit over the 61% retracement, I'm not sure. Actually looks like it held it. Um, but if we were to come back down through the 618 to the downside, that would be a pretty important uh, sign of a potential shift taking place, all right? Use this to your advantage so that you don't have to rely too much on the indicators. Use the indicators to confirm rather than call everything. You, you want to use price to really call everything and use this to um, really confirm. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and also subscribe. Uh, now, my research can be found at RabelStockResearch.com, as well as information on the courses. I'm about to add a third course, which will be included in the current bundle. Um, if you have an interest, you can take a look. And also, if you'd like to get started in learning more about my approach, I would go to RabelStockResearch.com forward slash book. Um, I'm offering the book at a discount right now. All right, let's get into the individual uh, symbols now. Before we get into the symbols, I did want to point something out, a new uh, item that has been added to uh, stock charts, the ACP. So if you notice here on the bottom, we've got the chart list and the sector summary. I mentioned the sector summary a week or two ago. They now have an options uh, tab. And what I really like about this is um, so you can you can either do a list view if you just want to look at calls or if you want to do the straddle view where you can see both puts and calls together but one of the things that's cool here is in the upper right you can narrow in so uh, looking at disney it's gapping up this morning you know if you want to see something you know above 100 say to 114 you can just narrow these and to see which ones you want to see it's i i, I mean i've looked at options a lot and it just seems like such a pain to get uh, the the ones that you're looking for, the range that you're looking for in terms of strike price. So they've made it really easy from that standpoint. And then you can see the color uh, when it's green, it's uh, in the money and uh, white is uh, out of the money. So uh, pretty cool. If you use options, I would definitely suggest taking a look. 
All right, let's uh, let's start going through. Uh, the, I'm going to start with the QQQ and the IWM as I've been doing here. Um, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> and again, I, anyone who is new to the show, I do on my YouTube channel uh, on Friday morning, I do an update on the S&P uh, thoroughly and I go through all the market conditions and all that. So I don't typically cover that on the show. It just seems a little redundant. Um, but let's look at the QQQ, which has been one of the strongest indexes, and then we're going to go to the IWM, which has been lagging, and let's see if there's any shifts taking place. So right now, it's sort of uh, the same uh, situation where um, I keep on relying on this black line. This is the S&P versus the S, uh, I'm sorry, the, the QQQ versus the S&P. So the black line is showing when it's rising, it's outperforming the S&P. When it falls, that means it's underperforming the S&P. Uh, so I call it a relative performance line. And what, we, what we're looking for is a shift in this line. If this breaks this moving average and that moving average starts to roll, you start to get a lot more concerned about what's taking place in this NASDAQ 100. All right. Um, we've got a little bit of divergence. If you notice, we don't have an actual swing, but we had a down uh, bar and then we moved back up. So we can kind of dis distinguish that as a, um, as a new high in price. And yet the RSI is making a slightly lower high in RSI 5. So it's not dramatic. It's not as dramatic as it was here last year. You see how we had pretty significant divergence there. So this isn't really quite like that, but it is it is what, what I would qualify as divergence. So we want to be on the lookout, especially just based on how far this has run um, and how far it's gone in such a short period of time. I don't see anything glaring. It's typically the, the momentum is going to show up. A divergence is going to show up on the daily first. A um, little bit of divergence showing up here, a little bit of divergence showing up in the DI. I mean, it's not dramatic. It's not anything that's, that's all that glaring. The size of the bars are shrinking a little bit. Um, as we break out. So typically when you break to a new high, you want to see bar, the bars expand. So yeah, there's a little bit of a slowdown in the momentum, but I don't think, uh, you know, I don't see anything overly concerned. I think we're looking for signs of distribution. So you want to keep an eye out for, so that's a distribution day right there, big distribution bar. We're looking for a couple more of those over the course of the week to really start to get concerned. Um, just haven't seen it yet, uh, but you know I'm, I'm sure they're right around the corner just based on how extended this has gotten. All right, let's look at the IWM because if you think about it, if we're gonna expand, if if the we're gonna get a broadening effect, if there's gonna be more stocks participating, which I think is a better environment where you know you instead of just having a few stocks uh, taking the market to the upside. You really want to see more and more stocks participating. And I think until this IWM gets through 200, this is the key level right here, 200. If we can get through 200, if we can see this RS line start to break out above its moving average, and in reality, what we're really looking for is a break of this downtrend and then a turn to the upside, which would be a 1, 2, 3 on the RS line itself. I think if we can get that, then I'd start to feel a little bit better about what's going on. And when I look at the price action, it really doesn't look that bad. We've got a reversal taking place on the monthly chart. The, the weekly chart is starting to show signs of improvement. But, but you got to realize this is, this is lagging the market. It's not, it's not outperforming. And typically in good environments, uh, you'll see improvement. Now, the daily chart is actually setting up with a low ADX signal at a zero line reversal on the MACD. So a break of the downtrend could provide a trading opportunity. And that's not really about relative performance. That's just saying, look, we've got a, a weekly daily setup. If we break that trend line, um, it could be a decent little trading play. All right, I want to start out and look at uh, Disney just because of the big gap up that's taking place on its earnings. Um, one of the things that I think is uh, interesting is, first of all, on the monthly chart, we went to a new low here in price. The MACD did not. It showed a little bit of divergence. You can really see it in the histogram, uh, not really confirming uh, the new low. And we got a couple really quiet, narrow range bars right at the bottom. I go into, in my book, I do not talk about candlesticks, but I do go into that. The first lessons in the uh, course is on um, candles and how I look at those 
uh, in relation to four things I'm looking at. But one of the things that's important here is we went to a new low and had no new momentum to the downside, and then we get this reversal. Now, anyone who has uh, looked at my book or watched this show at all over the course of the last year would recognize this pullback play is a pinch play with Green DI kicking in for the first time in about a, uh, six to nine months as it pulled back to the 18, which was falling and is now rising, right? This is a pretty good little setup on the weekly. And we got the daily chart was an opposing trend pattern, all right? All right, I just wanted to point that out. Now, when I look at this, I'm kind of thinking, you know, there's going to be some resistance up here. It's, it's early in the pattern. We don't really have a true change in trend. We need this to come back and test and do this. So I think it's going to take a little time. But we're probably going to have some room for this to work up to somewhere around 120, 125, something like that. Um, as the, the strength in this move and the volume action and the improving momentum on the uh, daily chart. You see how we got strong momentum on the daily? I think that's a really good sign. Okay, let's look at the CRWD because here's what I want to talk about. Uh, this is really important in the environment we're in. Do you see how... Um, we had a strong trend in place on the weekly chart, and you see how it's going into an accelerated mode. Do you st so this is something we have to recognize. This is not a sequential wave. Sequential wave is when you go up and you have, you know, pretty uh, standard up move and pullback. They're 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 about the same size. You don't have any drastic movement. You don't break out of the channel. See this channel we had in place? You don't typically break out of the channel. What you do is you just move up and then you pull back and you move up. And it was doing it for a little while. And now it's moved into this surging market phase. So I'd call this a surging market. So we need to accelerate the trend line. So you had a trend line that was basically at this pace. And now we've got a trend line at this pace. And it's very possible we'll do it one more time and we'll have to accelerate it again. All right. If we, um, if we get this to uh, pull back and go again, then we'd accelerate it one more time. So we want to be on the lookout for this type of environment. Now, one of the things you notice is that we're not coming back to the uh, 18, all right? But on the daily chart, we are. Do you see how the daily chart is still in a sequential wave? Now, it's in a different, and so it's a surging market phase, but if you notice, we're pulling back to the 18 here and we're st and we kind of pull we're still pulling back in the area of the 18 it's just at a different pace but these lines are still fairly parallel all right so we need to switch our time frame when this happens we're not going to get setups on the weekly anymore we have to if we want to play this we're going to have to do it off the daily and be more of a trader so i just thought this was real important to cover all right let's look at the um, ura so um uh, I, I'm talking about URA because I got a question about UUUU, all right? This is one of the stocks and uranium stocks. And so what I wanted to show is how much this has moved. Look at the nice signal this got uh, as this broke uh, down, broke this downtrend line here. Um, and we turn the corner with the higher low. Look at the MACD turning. Green DI is starting to kick in. It took a little bit longer for MACD to, uh, ADX to kick in. Uh, MACD really gave a nice signal, but then this has taken off. Now, it's a very volatile trend. You see how volatile this is? But it's made a really nice move. I mean, this is up about 50% during that time. So I wanted to point that out because if you start to go and look at what's taking place on UUU, I mean, it, we've had a big move in URA, and, yet that, and that's basically the group, and yet this hasn't moved yet. So I wanted to point this out because the pattern itself doesn't look that bad, but it, it sort of just missed out on a great move for the group. So I'm, I sort of question what's going on with this stock. So it would make me a little leery about it. Initially, I thought this had a really good chance of performing. And even here in uh, October, November of last year, I thought it, it would participate. Now, I ser seriously question that. So you got to be a little bit more careful on... Uh, you know, uh, what's taking place in this. Now, if we got a new surge of momentum to the upside that broke out of this little channel, then maybe I'd have a little bit more interest. But it's got to prove itself first. All right, let's go and look at the uh, YELP, Yelp. Um, so on a monthly chart, it's got a really good look to it. It's it's moved up um, and it's, it's broken this downtrend line. 
Uh, there's signs of improvement. Now, it had this couple bar pullback and pulled back to the breakout level around 40, but it hasn't had a lot of follow through. And again, you see how we made a minor new high and then it's kind of retraced again. So it looks to me like the monthly needs a little bit more time to pull back and consolidate. The, daily, uh, the weekly chart actually um, went to a new high. All right. It actually tried to break out and look at how MACD did not confirm. Actually, green DI really just made a double top. We've still in a contraction phase um, in this, even though price went to a new high. So I think more consolidation. I bet these two moving averages are going to come together. Um, and as this consolidates more, maybe the MACD comes a little bit closer to the zero line. And then if that happens, then I think we're, um, we're going to, this is going to look a little bit more attractive, but I think we've got to get a list a little bit more time. I don't think I would be looking at this as a pullback on the weekly to buy on the daily. Um, I would give this more time than that. Okay. Let's look at the, uh, HPQ. Um, I just don't see this one. It, it's, it's not doing really a whole lot. It's tried to get through the 18 month a few times and it just hasn't been able to carry enough. Um, I mean, we are trying to form a zero line reversal on the monthly chart and there's not a lot of selling pressure. I do think there is a, a decent amount of support here at 25, 26, but I'm just not, I just don't think um, I see the strength to the upside. I mean, we do have a little bit of an undercut pattern but the dynamics of the move are just not that strong. We're not getting the kind of dynamics I'd like to see in terms of momentum. Even on the MACD, it's not really registering that much. Probably need to see this move up through this high with improving momentum and then look to buy the first pullback. Don't get, I wouldn't be jumpy on this. I just don't think there's any rush on that stock. Okay, let's look at the LDOS. So um, this is one that I did notice is starting to come on. It was sort of lagging what's taking place in technology. And uh, all of a sudden, it's starting to perk up a little bit. And notice how we got our, uh, our reversal pattern at the zero line on the MACD on a monthly chart, right? After undercutting support. All right, so that to me, um, I think is a bullish backdrop which is what we want. We want to look at the backdrop and say, you know what, this looks uh, pretty interesting. Now, on a weekly chart, it's a little sloppy. You see how the size of these swings, it's not a tight pattern. It's very wide and loose. It's not really what I would be looking for. And yes, there is signs of momentum improvement, but because it's so wide and loose and we've got all this resistance up there, I think you have to look for a pullback that it doesn't provide any uh, real wild swings or anything. If we can get a, a, a light volume pullback that's orderly, then I think you can take a look at this. But I, I, right now, I would not be inclined to be thinking I want to either buy the breakout or buy this now in anticipation of a breakout. Um, let's look at MRI. So this is a little bit different. So if we look at what took place in LDOS and then look at the compact consolidation this was, we had a few few swings, but the reality is, is that this is a much tighter pattern, more attractive. And then look at the orderly pullback. Look at the momentum to the upside. Look at the strength in the MACD, right? I mean, this is the kind of pullback we want to be looking for after a tight base breakout um, that has a lot of the things we're looking for. The other thing I'll mention is notice how the 18 month is turning up for the first time. Go back and look through your stocks. Notice the ones where the 18 month is starting to turn. That means the bias is the long term bias is switching to the upside. That's really important. Now, this doesn't have a lot of history, but a lot of stocks that do have history are turning up for the first time in about a year, year and a half. The 18 month is turning up. That is what we want to be on the lookout for. We want to have that long term uh, support behind us. Thanks for watching the show today. If you have any stock requests you'd like me to analyze on the next show, send them to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Also, uh, if you have an interest in learning more about momentum indicators, I would go to uh, my YouTube channel called Invest Like a Pro. All right, have a great week and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.